We help this e-commerce client generate 281 purchases for a total conversion revenue of over $10,000 using Facebook ads. We help this mentoring and coaching company gain 22 qualified leads in just one month with Facebook ads. And we help this client who sells leggings get 478 purchases at just $3.65 per purchase using Facebook ads. Now you may be saying, that's great, but I've tried Facebook ads and have not had good results. Or maybe you've looked into Facebook ads and it just feels overwhelming. When our newer clients come to us with similar sentiments, we analyze their ad account and usually find that their targeting is off. You could have a great ad with an awesome offer, but if you're delivering it to the wrong people, you're probably not going to get anywhere with it. Plus, a lot of our clients are often just unaware of some of the powerful targeting options that Facebook provides. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the targeting options Facebook has, how to use them, and which targeting options we gravitate towards the most here at Life. Stick around. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandy with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency with a mission to help small businesses grow. And today I'm gonna to cover all of the Facebook advertising targeting options available to use and pinpoint the ones that are usually the most beneficial for business owners. But before we dive in, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel for new digital marketing videos every single week. All right, so let's head to business.facebook.com slash ads manager to get to our Facebook ads manager and jump into the first set of targeting options that for the sake of this video, I'm gonna call the basics. At minimum, when you run a Facebook ad, you can target by location, age, and gender. So starting with location, you can target by country, a 10 to 50 mile radius around a city, and you can target by zip codes. If you own a brick and mortar location like a restaurant, this can help you target people who live with a relevant distance. Or if you own an e-commerce store and have a list of areas or countries that you're able to ship to, you can upload locations in bulk by countries, regions or states, DMAs, cities, postal codes, and addresses. Also keep in mind that there are four different ways to target locations. People living in or recently in this location, people living in this location, people recently in this location, or people traveling in this location. So you'll wanna select the option that makes the most sense for your business. For age, you can target anywhere between the ages of 13 to 65, and you can target by both genders or solely by women or solely by men. For age and gender, you wanna think about your ideal customer and who your target audience consists of and choose the age range and gender that again, makes the most sense for your business. So those are the basic targeting options that if nothing else, you should have those nailed down. For most businesses though, this is not enough to create a successful Facebook campaign with. So let's get into the next level of targeting options called detailed targeting. Now at a glance, Facebook's detailed targeting consists of demographics, behaviors, and interests. I'm gonna hop over to my computer to screen share these targeting options with y'all because there are a lot. All right, I'm on my computer now and I just have a fake ad set pulled up here so I can walk through some of the targeting options with you guys. So under audience, under create new audience, if you scroll down to detailed targeting, this is where you're going to find your demographics, interests and behaviors. Um, so I'm just going to click through some of them and walk through these options with y'all. Um, if you hit browse, the first one up is demographics. Scroll down here, it says reach people based on education, employment, household and lifestyle details. Some data is available for the US only. Um, and I will just add to that that vice versa, there, are, there is some data that is not available in the US, but it is available in other countries. So um, depending on who you're targeting and where you're targeting, just keep your eye out on that, on things that may or may not be available to you. Um, but when we click this drop down arrow, these are some of the categories under demographics. We have education, financial, life events, parents, relationship, and work. Um, so I'm just gonna click through some of these, not through all of them because there are a ton. Um, but for example, under education, if you wanted to target people by their field of study, you can type things in and search for yourself. Um, so marketing, marketing director is the only thing that comes up for that. Um, you could type in other fields of studies that you want to target to see if they're available to target. If you want to target by certain schools, like type in University of Georgia, you can see what comes up. Um, undergrad years, when you click this, it actually pops up um, 
right here, it pops up what years you want to target by education, like when they got their degrees. Um, so lots of different targeting options available under education. Financial, um, this one has changed a little bit in the past years based on restrictions, but um, basically this is household income based on the top, top percentage of certain zip codes in the US. Um, and you can see whenever you highlight a targeting option that gives you a descriptor here, um, it also gives you a size of that audience, which is nice. Um, let's look at life events. So these are pretty popular, um, especially the birthday one or depending on the nature of your business, maybe the anniversary. Um, but for example, a lot of businesses like to target people who have an upcoming birthday um, with like a birthday offer. So um, for example, if you sold t-shirts and you wanted to offer people 10% off for their birthday, you could specifically target people who have an upcoming birthday. Um, you can also do friends of people who have a birthday coming up. So if you're promoting your item as like a gift, um, that could be a good option as well. And like I said, anniversary, um, away from family people, the description is the same thing. People who are away from their family or away from their hometown. Um, a lot of people mark that by moving on Facebook, marking when they've moved, but um, long distance relationship, new job, new relationship, newly engaged, newly wed, um, recently moved. So, um, and you can see uh, people who have updated their profile with a new current city in the last six months. So those are some of the uh, life event options that you can target parents. Under all parents, you can target parent by the age of their children. Um, so if you if parents are your demographic, they have a lot of different options here. Um, let's look at relationship next. Relationship status. So these are based on what people have listed as their relationship status in their Facebook profile. So you can see all the different options here. Let's look at work. Um, we have employers, industries, and job titles. Um, in my experience, these are only super useful with huge companies. Um, you're probably not going to find, uh, you know, um, an independent deli on here as an employer. Um, but some of the bigger companies you could find if you're wanting to look for their employers or industries and job titles. Um, this is kind of in competition with LinkedIn a little bit in terms of trying to target people by their job titles. Um, and that's it for demographics. So let's look at interests next. Um, interests reach specific audiences by looking at their interests, activities, the pages that they have liked and closely related topics. So we have business and industry, entertainment, family and relationships, fitness and wellness, food and drink, hobbies and activities, shopping and fashion, sports and outdoors, and technology. So again, let's just click through some of these. Um, advertising, agriculture, architecture, aviation, and some of these have further drop down, like under banking, they have investment banking, online banking, and retail banking. So these are some of the things that you can click through to see if there's anything that would be relevant to your audience to target them by. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that one. All right, let's look at entertainment next. Games, live events, movies, music, reading, TV. Under family and relationships, we have dating, family, fatherhood, friendship, marriage, motherhood, parenting, and weddings. Now, keep in mind that for these, this is not demographics. If you're looking for someone who is a dad or someone who is dating, someone who is a parent, um, you need to find all of that back up where we just were under demographics. These are interests. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Fitness and wellness, bodybuilding, meditation, running, yoga, food and drink. We have all of these, and these seem to have further drop down drop downs as well. 
hobbies and activities. These have further drop downs as well. All right, and shopping and fashion, beauty, clothing, fashion, accessories, shopping, whether they like to shop at boutiques, couponing, discount stores, etc. Uh, sports and outdoors, outdoor recreation. Scroll down here. Okay, we've got some of those options there. And technology, computers, consumer electronics, and then they have some more specific things. Let me scroll back up here. There you go. Um, computer memory, computer monitors, etc. Okay, and that's it for interest. So let's put that one back. All right, behaviors is next. Um, oh, before I do that, let's look at this. Um, reach people based on purchase behaviors or intents, device usage, and more. Some behavior data is available for U.S. audiences only. So um, we have anniversary, consumer classification, digital activities, expats, mobile device user, mobile device user versus device use time, more categories, politics, purchase behaviors, soccer, and travel. So let's click through some of these. Um, so this is a little bit, can, I, this can be a little bit confusing sometimes between this and demographics, but um, this is people with an anniversary in 61 to 90 days, and they are counting that as a behavior, um, but it's not an interest. It's not people who are interested in anniversaries. It's people who have one in the next 61 to 90 days. Consumer classification, they have different countries here. Um, and as you can see, I believe, yeah, this is one of those things that is not available in the U.S., but it's available in these other countries to see people who prefer high value goods versus prefer mid and high value goods in that country. Digital activities. Um, so this one can be kind of cool depending on the nature of your business. It's Facebook payments users, people who have used Facebook pay payments in the past 30 to 90 days. Facebook page admins. So if you're targeting business owners, business page admins is a good one to target because these are small business owners who are the admins of these pages more than likely. Um, so if you're targeting B2B, that could be a good option for you. Facebook page admins might be a good option, but I think business page admins would be a little bit more specific. Facebook page could just be a Facebook page for anything and not necessarily business. Um, but they have different style or uh, different topics of different types of page admins like health and beauty, food and restaurant, et cetera. Um, so they have all of that listed there. If any of that kind of fits within your target audience. They have expats of people who formerly lived in other places. Mobile device user. So they have... Um, people whose primary mobile device is either Android or Apple with support for 360 degree media. Um, they have that kind of information here if that's relevant to you. And then they have the same thing plus use time. More categories interested in upcoming events, people who have expressed interest in attending an upcoming Facebook event, marketing API developers, um, that have used Facebook marketing API in the last 90 days. Politics, uh, likely engagement with US political content, conservative versus liberal versus moderate. Purchase behavior, this one's also a popular one to use. So um, this is engaged shopper, people who have clicked on the call to action button shop now in the past week. So. Unlike that Facebook payments one that we looked at earlier, this one is not exclusive to just people who paid using Facebook payments. Um, this is people who have clicked the shop now button in the last seven days. So if you are an e-commerce store or you sell anything online, this could be a really beneficial qualifier for you to add in there of people who are actively buying. Um, and this is another one of those random things that they stuck in behaviors, but under soccer, 
um, friends of soccer fans, friends of anyone that is moderately or highly engaged football, U.S. soccer fan, excludes people that are already football fans. And then they have the high content engagement and moderate content engagement audiences here. And then travel commuters, frequent travelers, frequent international travelers, returned from travels one week ago, returned from travels two weeks ago. Um, I've had some travel clients myself, so this can definitely come in handy. Um, so those are the three different broad categories and some of the things that um, they have listed at a glance. Um, I also, if you can think of something, if you're thinking of something specific and you don't really know what category it would be in, you can always just type it in here and it will come up with all of these different things for you just from all the different categories. Um, so that's always something that you can do as well. Um, and something else that I wanted to show you guys while I'm here is this exclude button. So if there's somebody that you did not want to target, you can kind of narrow down your targeting here um, and say that I want to target these people, but I don't want to target these people in that. And that can be helpful when there's overlap. So an example there would be if you wanted to target those engaged shoppers, people who have bought something within the last seven days, but then exclude people with a lower household income, you could do that. Um, and furthermore, I'm just going to type in marketing as an interest here to show you. When you type something in there, you can also hit narrow audience. And in addition to excluding people, you can set it to and also match. Um, so for example, if we wanted to target people interested in marketing and also target those engaged shoppers, if you put both marketing and engaged shoppers up here, your ad is going to target either or. Um, so if you want engaged shoppers to just be an all around qualifier that, you know, we want people to be interested in marketing and be an engaged shopper, then you need to put that down here under the and also and must also match. Um, so that's a really good tip for people when they're setting up their ads to narrow things down either by using the and must also match feature or the exclusion feature. Um, and the last thing I'll say here before I hop back in front of the camera is down here under connections, you can also add a connection type. So people who currently like your Facebook page, people who are similar to those who currently like your page or exclude people who like your page. So for instance, if you're trying to reach new people, you could exclude the ones you've already got by excluding people who like your page. Um, and same thing for down here with apps and events, people who've used your app, people who are similar to those who've used your app, exclude people who've used your app, um, people who responded to your event or exclude people who already responded to your event um, and things like that. So that can also be helpful depending on what your goal is and what the nature of your campaign is. But that's all I've got for detailed targeting. So I am going to hop back in front of the camera now. Okay, so as you can see, Facebook offers a ton of targeting options via demographics, behaviors, and interests. Now, before we move into the next set of targeting options that we use a lot here at Life, I wanna take a moment and point out that beyond who you target, where you target matters as well. Let's take another look at our screen on Ads Manager. Underneath the detailed targeting section, we see placements. Using Facebook Ads Manager, you can deliver your ad on Facebook, Instagram, audience network, and messenger, depending on your ad campaign, because not all campaigns are compatible with all platforms. And then within those platforms, you have different placements. As you run your mouse over each placement option, Facebook gives you an example of how it will appear in the feed. You'll want to A-B split test these placements, meaning you'll want to run the same ads on different platforms to see which platforms and placements work best for your specific business. But in my experience, audience network gets you a lot of unqualified clicks with a little ROI and the Facebook newsfeed and Instagram newsfeed tend to perform the best in terms of driving qualified traffic that actually converts. All right, moving on to the next set of targeting options that may not be so obvious when looking in Ads Manager, custom audiences. So what are custom audiences? Facebook says a custom audience is an ad targeting option that lets you find your existing audiences among people who are on Facebook. 
you can use sources like customer lists, website or app traffic, or engagement on Facebook to create custom audiences of people who already know your business. Now, the only thing I will add to that is that you can access these audiences on Instagram as well, since Facebook owns Instagram. These are the audiences that we leverage as much as possible here at Life because they are that effective. So how can you access them? Custom audiences are first created in a different part of Ads Manager before you can select them from the ad set level in your ad campaign. So you'll wanna click under the Business Tools menu and then click Audiences. You'll land on a screen like this and you'll want to click the blue Create Audience button. There you'll see three options to create a custom audience, a lookalike audience, or a special ad audience. Now, the special ad audience is limited to credit, employment, and housing ads, so I'm not gonna spend much time on this one, but the custom audience and lookalike audience can be beneficial to all business owners. So I'm gonna hop back over to my computer to walk you through these options. All right, I'm back on my computer again. Um, let's look at custom audiences first. It says connect with people who have already shown an interest in your business or product with custom audiences. Okay, so these are all of the sources that you can gain an audience from. So if you have your Facebook pixel um, connected, and I will link, Sean has done some videos on that. I will link them in the description um, of how you can get that set up. But if your website is connected to your Facebook ad account, you can click that as your source um, and create an audience based on website visitors that you have, tailor your audience based on events that you wanna focus on such as purchases or add to carts, things like that. If you have an app, um, you can use app activity as a source of people who launched your app or game or took a specific action while using it such as purchasing an item. Customer list. Create an audience by uploading a list of customers who have interacted with your business. Information in this list is hashed into anonymized code before it reaches Facebook. So this is if you have a sizable email list um, of customers, that could be a good source to upload here. An offline activity, create an audience of people who interacted with your business in store, over the phone, or by other offline channels. So then in addition to your sources here, you can also pull from Facebook sources. So create an audience of people who watched one of your videos on Facebook or Instagram. Create an audience of people who opened or completed a form in one of your lead generation ads on Facebook or Instagram. Create an audience of people who opened your instant experience on Facebook or Instagram. Create an audience of people who interacted with your products and a shopping experience on Facebook or Instagram. Create an audience of people who visited or interacted with your Instagram profile, posts, or ads. You will need a professional account, which can be either a business or creator account. Events. Create an audience of people who interacted with one of your events on Facebook. Create an audience of people who follow or interacted with your page. On Facebook listings. Create an audience of people who interacted with the on Facebook listings from your catalog. It does depend on the nature of your business and it also depends on what kind of data you've built up to date. Um, if you don't already have tons of website traffic or emails, or maybe you just connected your Facebook pixel today. So Facebook doesn't really know about your website traffic yet. Um, it might be good to start with some Facebook sources, start pulling people who have interacted with your videos, with your Instagram, who have liked your posts, things like that. Um, but these custom audiences are great to set up for a couple of reasons. One is for retargeting. So as an example, um, let's say you pull your source from your website, depending on the events that you're tracking through your Facebook pixel, um, you could potentially set up a remarketing campaign to target people who have visited your website in the last seven days, but did not purchase. And if you remember back in our, when we were looking at our detail targeting, I talked about how you can exclude audiences as well. This is another example of that. If you wanna target people who yes, have visited your website, but exclude the people who have already made a purchase in the last seven days, maybe, um, cause you don't wanna keep hitting people with ads when they've already made their recent purchase um, and capitalize on the people who left without making a purchase. This is how you do that. Um, you have to set up a custom audience first. Um, and then the second thing is to create lookalike audiences out of these audiences. So let's go ahead and look at the lookalike audience option. 
So you can see the first thing it's doing is asking to select your lookalike source. Um, and before I go any further, let me just briefly explain what a lookalike audience is if you have not seen our other videos on this yet. Um, a lookalike audience is something that Facebook creates. They make an audience based off of the existing source that you upload. Um, the best type of lookalike audiences are lookalikes of your existing customer base because Facebook will take everything it knows about your existing customer base and make a brand new audience of new people who look like your existing customers based on their interests, their buying behaviors, everything Facebook can know and track about them. So this can often be a really good way to find new customers that are already sort of qualified instead of just throwing a shot in the dark and hoping. Um, and that's why it's important to create those custom audiences first because you make a lookalike out of those custom audiences. So as an example, um, if we wanted to create a lookalike of our existing customers, um, I would suggest going back to those custom audiences and uploading your email list first of all your customers, um, preferably a thousand or more in order to have a pretty sizable lookalike audience, or sorry, in order to have a pretty accurate lookalike audience. Um, so you would select that custom audience here as your source. And then you could select the region or country that you want this new audience to be located in and then select the audience size, number of lookalike audiences. So it says you can create multiple lookalikes with different levels of similarity to your source. This allows you to bid differently for audiences with different conversion values. So in my experience, we normally do from the zero to 1% range because we want the lookalike audience to be as similar to the original source as possible. You could definitely A-B split test different ranges to see um, what works best for you. It says audience size ranges from one to 10% of the combined population of your selected locations. A 1% lookalike consists of people most similar to your lookalike source. Increasing the percentage creates a bigger, broader audience. So that's the caveat there. Um, the further you drag this bar down to the 10% range, the bigger the audience, but the further we go down here, the less similar it looks like your original source. Um, so like I said, that's why we typically stay between the zero to 1% range because we just want to find people who are most similar to our current customers. Um, and again, you could do this with other types of audiences as well. For example, if you're trying to grow your Facebook page followers, you could create a lookalike out of your current Facebook page followers to find more people who are likely to like your page because they're similar to your existing followers. So that's lookalikes in a nutshell. These are the custom audiences that we use the most. Um, I'm going to hop back in front of the camera now. So that's how you can create your own custom and lookalike audiences. So then when you're back on your ad set screen in the middle of creating a Facebook ad campaign, you can select those from the audiences you've created. All right, so now that we've talked about all the different types of targeting options there are on Facebook, the last thing I wanna quickly talk about is how to use them and how to think about them. You wanna think about all of your Facebook audiences in terms of your marketing funnel. How warm or cold are they as an audience, AKA how close are they to buying from you? The ads that you're sending to your retargeting audience should be different from the ads that you're sending to an audience based solely on interests who have never heard of you before. So separate your audiences into different ad sets and that way you can deliver different ads to each audience based on where they fall in your marketing funnel. So we've covered Facebook's different targeting options and how to utilize them, but do you still have questions? Comment below if there's another video about this you'd like to see and let me know what kind of questions that you want answered. All right, that's all I have for today, guys. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next episode.